Good day everyone! Good day my dear BS and English students! Ngayon, uh, we will be having eco criticism as part of the continuation of our discussion in literary criticism and approaches. Last time we discussed Marxism or known as the Marxist criticism. I know you have an idea uh, of what eco criticism is by just combining the two words echo and criticism. But for us to have a concrete definition of ecocriticism, let us have the following. Ecocriticism is the study of the representations of nature in literary works and of the relationship between literature and the environment. The interdisciplinary study of literature and ecology. Ecocriticism is a young literary theory. So why? Because it is... Uh, emerging not too uh, timely as what others or hindi ganun kasing tagal or nauna compared dun sa ibang mga literary theories. So, kung masasabi, this is somewhat um, bago pa or bata pa. Ego critics consider the many relations between literature and the natural world. So to make it easier or in a simpler word, we could say that ego criticism is the relationship between literature and the environment. So probably most of the topics would deal with how the characters would interact with the setting of the story. Ecocriticism is the study of literature and environment from an interdisciplinary point of view where all sciences come together to analyze the environment and brainstorm possible solutions for the correction of the contemporary environmental situation. So probably as well, uh, those topics involving ecocriticism would be stories related to taking care of the environment or making possible solutions on how to improve the present condition brought by the changing environment or those things that make um or the bad habits of the people that could harm the environment. So those are things that are being considered when we uh, use the eco criticist approach. There's also a contention here, man versus nature. What would be uh, the main goal for this? Anthropocentrism says that man is in the center of everything. According to the Bible, man is created from the image of God. Man is the most important creature in the nature. Man can use everything, including woman. Let the man rule everything. So that's the rule of life, according to... Uh, this principle, man is the center of everything and the, of course human beings are the one who governed the earth as well as everything around it. And to continue, let's have the next slide. Ecocriticism says that we are all equal. So that's the contention naman when we have the ecocriticism because before we said that it's solely a man's world and the center is the man. But in ecocriticism, whether you are a man or a woman or any beings, if you have life, it means you are all treated equally. And yes, as human beings, we are all part of nature. Man is not superior or inferior to nature, but equal. So we are in the balanced world wherein everybody is treated equally according to eco-criticism. Each and everything in the universe works in particular cycle. And according to eco-criticist, um, we have different roles being performed as we live in we cannot compare ourselves with others because they have other roles as well. So we are uniquely uh, important in our own ways. In eco-criticism, nature is the center, not the man. So that's uh, the main highlight of eco-criticism, not the human beings, the one to govern 
the world or nature, but nature is the center. It is a study of literature and physical environment. It is an earth-centered approach to the literary study. Ecologists think that man is the only disturbance in the universe. So that's the uh, other way around. Uh, we are thinking that we are stewards of the earth, but then some would say that we are disturbance of it because of the inhuman acts made by human beings earth or the world is being destroyed or damaged that cause different calamities and different uh, problems in our environment. Ecologically, man is the ultimate villain. That's what I am telling a while ago. Uh, we could be considered as villain because we are the one bringing disturbance to the balance of the earth by the different things we are doing to harm our environment. Another is, if there's no man on earth, then everybody will live peacefully, according to ecologists. But uh, come to say with this one, ecologists are, are also human beings, but they believe that if there's no man on earth, everybody will live peacefully. So it's for you to think about it, because man has so much greed, according to them. Humans can be very self-centered. That's why they are not thinking of the harms that they might bring uh, in the environment. So probably this is the negative effects of not uh, taking care of what we have. And in medieval time, there was God-centered world, but in Renaissance time, humanism rises and man started challenging God and nature. In the story of Dr. Faustus, uh, his character, yes, he is a scholar and atheist, and he challenges God. So according to ecologists, is Faustus a villain? So that's another question. And also, when you say atheist, an unbeliever. There is another biblical story about Jacob wrestling with the angel. The question is, going back to the case of Dr. Faustus. Okay. Is Dr. Faustus a villain? So, so who would be a villain? According to ecologists, the human beings which are trying to harm the environment or nature around him. But you think Dr. Faustus is a villain? So it's for you to find out. You can research about the story and also about the story of Jacob wrestling with an angel here is an example of echo uh, criticist approach in the story earth day so it is a 2009 documentary film about the history of environmental movement in u.s directed by robert stone the film reviews the development of modern environmental movement from the post-war and 1950s and in 1962, publication of Rachel Carson's bestseller, Silent Spring, to the successful Earth Day celebration in uh, 1920. And if we will go back with the actual date of Earth Day, I think it's April. Is it April 20? Tiny check on that details. So there, uh, basically the topic and the theme of eco criticism or eco criticist literature is on how uh, we could be protectors of nature and how nature would play a great role in our lives and also the reconciliation with nature another another story is uh silent spring it is an environmental science book by Rachel Carson. The book was published on the 27th of September, 1962. It documented the detrimental effects on the environment of the indiscriminate use of pesticides. In 1996, a follow-up book, Beyond Silent Spring, co-written by H.F. Van Emden and David Pickle, was published. And in 2006, 
Silent Spring was named one of the 25 greatest science books of all time by the editors of Discover Magazine. Okay, so if you have longer time class, you can also uh, research for the summary of Silent Spring and find out why it is considered as the greatest science book of all time by the editors. To continue, let's have the next. Here are the other examples of uh, movies and book covers of uh, those applying the echo criticism approach. First one uh, here, uh, examples but are not limited to. I know you have lots of stories to find out or to say that they are uh, under echo criticism approach. 2012, Alive, The Gray, All is Lost, Avatar, 127 hours into the wild and against the sun. In literature, American and British romantic writers took a particular interest in nature as a subject. Victorian realists wrote about industrialization, which was changing the natural landscape. Explorers and natural historians began to write about newly encountered places and wildlife. And pioneers and other travelers wrote of the experiences with an emphasis on setting. Two important books of criticism from the mid-20th century included Henry Nashmith's Virgin Land, The American West a Symbol and Mist, and Leo Marx's The Machine in the Garden. So those are other examples uh, on that mid-20th century. So this also uh, gave us the background even uh i told you earlier that this this echo criticism is one of the newbies or uh isa sa pinakabagong approach we can also trace back that uh it has ancient beginnings but then not so ancient kasi 1950s naman ito but then siguro yung pinakalumang matitrace is um for American and British Romantic writers. Now, let's have the next slide. Today, we've got the shortlist battling for Team Echo criticism. So here are the notable people uh, known for their advocacy for Echo criticism. First one is Lawrence Bowell. He thinks we lack imagination when we analyze nature. So that's according to him. We also have uh, Sir Pill Ockerman stresses the need for this theory to be interdisciplinary. Like how are we supposed to wrap our little minds around the real meaning of the tree in a tree grows in Brooklyn? Another is Dana Phillips. This guy thinks we over-romanticize nature and that contemporary nature writing is basically a crook. He'd really like for us to rethink what we mean when we use the word uh, the word nature to begin with, actually. And these three proud lip critics don't always get along, but they are all agreeing on one central idea. Both our imaginations and understandings of the environment and expand when we dissect the relations between the human, the natural world, and the tech. So this is also in connection with what I have discussed to you on our literary criticism map. There's always the human, the natural world, and the text, and how they interact with one another. So probably, again, we could say the human are the characters, the natural world is the environment, and the text uh, is a representation of the literary material itself. So we are having the eco-criticism, therefore, we also have larger emphasis on the natural world or the environment that they are in. Next. Okay. Um, as we browse. American and British romantic writers, as what I have said uh, to 
a particular interest in nature as a subject. Okay, Victorian realists wrote, wrote about industrialization, which was changing the natural landscape explorers, and natural historians began to write about uh, newly encountered places and wildlife, and pioneers and other travelers wrote of their experiences with emphasis on surfing. Okay, if you will also go back, uh, I just reiterated that part. The there are stories, if you had the English 10 book, yung si, forgot the name of the author. Uh, if you would see the last part of English 10 book, mostly ang um, character ay tao with engagement in nature, uh, about traveling, about uh, going to different places, meet with the wildlife. I just forgot the name of that author. Sounds like letter J yung simula. Uh, who can give me the, the name of that person? Is it somewhat related or sounds like Chuck Cross? Or uh, nalimutan ko siyang i-recall. Yung nasa snow, ang setting, tapos mamaya. If I remembered, I will mention again. Okay, but uh, to make it short, the emphasis is always in the setting of the story and how the setting would affect uh, the kapalaran of the early characters. Another two important books which I had mentioned in the 20th century, yan, mentioned naman already. Let's have number 12. Ayan, na-mention ko na. In the process, some have rejected the label ecopartisism as it had become identified with one particular strand of the uh, scholarship that is ideologically aligned with deep ecology and strongly committed to political activism and suggested alternative designations such as environmental, ecological, literary studies, or green cultural studies. The term ecopartisism has stuck as the name for what is today, a rather large tent where a uh, work on nature writing can sit comfortably near to animal studies and post-colonial theory rub shoulders with echo feminism. Okay, so when we talk about echo feminism, of course, women empowerment with the touch of nature, and I could say that the best example for this is the story of Moana and uh, her search for a particular gem which could help her uh, bring back the abundance of their place. Okay, so that's a best uh, example of ecofeminism. And then, are there any question? Are there any questions on ecopartisism? If there's none, uh, I will just have the continuation of my discussion regarding this and we'll be showing you uh, examples, a lot of examples of ecopartisism and how uh, they really affect or interact. Uh, the characters would interact with nature. So with that, goodbye for now. And let's see uh, next meeting. Thank you.